Assassin, Freelance Tracker, Spartan 4, former UNSC Navy Lieutenant Commander, now ONI Agent and leader of Fire Team Osiris, tasked with the heavy burden of hunting down John 117 and the rest of Blue Team. This is the story of Jameson Locke. Jameson Locke was born on the colony of Jericho 7 on March 15th, 2529. When he was six years old, the Covenant invaded and glassed his homeworld, leading to him being evacuated and orphaned. He lost everyone he knew and was put in an orphanage with children in the exact same position. As time went by, many of the orphans enlisted in the UNSU for revenge against the Covenant. However, Locke continued to blame the government for their failure to defend his home. He also came to the conclusion that the UNSC couldn't protect its citizens. Due to this, he became a freelance tracker and assassin. His behaviour, coupled with questionable allegiances, caught the eye of Oni, who planned to train Locke into a specific role within their organisation. Seeking a greater purpose in life, he accepted, honed his skills to perfection and became one of their top field operatives. On September 26th, 2552, Locke compiled a target profile report concerning Fel Vadami. It contained his personal history, from the UNSC's first encounter with him on the rubble, to the glassing of Reach. Locke concluded the report by recommending Thal's termination to slow the Covenant advance. The report was later accessed by John 117. On February the 7th, 2556, Locke led an ONI team to the human colony Cedra to investigate terrorist activity. Locke's unit and the Cedron Colonial Guard were forced to cooperate after the Cedra city was targeted by an elite zealot with a very powerful bioweapon. The team spotted a Yonhet smuggler named Axel, supplying the zealot with a stasis refrigerant. While Agent Ramos apprehended Axel, Locke, Horrigan and Estrin pursued the elite. Locke chased him into a city access tunnel while Horrigan and the rest of the unit headed directly to the city. The zealot escaped into a Cedron Mall after a small skirmish with Locke and he followed. As the Elite prepared to activate the bioweapon, Locke jumped on him, disabled his shields and wounded him with his magnum. He tried to force the Elite to surrender, but just before he could, he jumped off a ledge and activated the bioweapon. He killed himself in the process, but many humans in the city began showing signs of infection afterwards, including Locke's fellow operatives, Jordan Gaines and Mason Hundley. The team was sent to the Cedron Colonial Guard Hospital, where the uninfected members went through a decontamination process. Locke searched for the freighter used to transport the bioweapon to Cedra, then witnessed Colonel Randall Aiken brutally interrogating Axel. Locke spoke to Axel in a simplified version of his language, and managed to persuade him into revealing what he knew about the origins of the element used in the bioweapon. They found out that the element was entirely new, and originated from a partly functioning segment of Installation 04 that was in orbit close to a red giant star. They found out that there was supposed to be a second run to the shard to retrieve more of the element. They gained the approval of Rear Admiral Goodwin, and were forced to cooperate with the Cedron Colonial Guard to travel to the Alpha Shard and capture the smugglers mining the element. They were also ordered to destroy all deposits of the element with a Havoc tactical nuke. The difficult part? Having only 16 hours on the ring's surface before it faced towards the star, making the temperature and radiation absolutely unbearable. The team, consisting of 11 ONI and Colonial Guard personnel, took a D81 LRT Condor and travelled to the Shard. Locke allowed Randall Aiken to take tactical command of the mission, and he also revealed to Private Mesa that Aiken was once a Spartan too. When they arrived at the shard surface, Locke and three other ONI operators jumped out of the Condor at a significant height, wearing their powered Nightfall armour. They discovered the smuggler's ship, and followed horse tracks nearby until they came across two smugglers, Aris Lee and Heisel Worry, who were mining the element. As they tried to escape, Horrigan quickly incapacitated and restrained them. They returned to the Condor for extraction, however whilst it was setting down, a large number of Let Gollow appeared and began to swarm over it and flew it off erratically. As more Let Gollow worms appeared, Locke had the group retreat as three of the Cedrons and horses were killed. The Let Gollow formed human-like figures and pursued the group into a narrow crevice. Locke used a special appliance to holographically camouflage their position, however the Let Gollow quickly sensed the cloaking device and destroyed it. As they closed in on the group, Aris revealed they can sense active technology and movement. The group reluctantly shut down their electronics present in their equipment, and most of the Let Gollow left the area as they couldn't detect them. 
The nine remaining survivors moved out of the crevice, but Locke briefly stayed behind to observe the Legolo worm before crushing it in his fist. On their way to the Condor's crash site, the group realised only two people would be able to leave Alpha Shard in the smuggler's ship. They decided to choose the two people once the mission was complete and ditched their armour to prevent the Let Golo from tracking them. To control the fighting within the group, Locke promised the smugglers that they had an equal chance of survival if they helped the team, and also reprimanded Horrigan after he suggested leaving both Sedrins and smugglers behind. The team took a break so everybody could refill on fresh oxygen. Activating the oxygen breathers alerted the Let Golo of their presence, and when they started moving again, Sergeant Samantha Wisner dropped her breather. It rolled down the hill and activated. Ramos went to check on her, and Locke noticed the two were missing. However, the Let Golo attacked Wisner, and Ramos just escaped as Locke arrived. With Wisner dead, Locke and Ramos retreated back to the group with Let Golo in pursuit. Whilst running, Locke fell off a ledge and trapped his foot under a rock. Mesa came to help him, but Locke refused, gave her his two oxygen breathers, and prepared to make a final stand against the Let Golo. Cleverly, Mesa activated an oxygen breather, and used it as a distraction for the worms while she helped Locke. The survivors regrouped and hid from the Let Golo. To allow the team to escape, Horrigan pushed Heisel down a hill so he could be devoured by the worms and, after escaping, Locke berated Horrigan for playing God. On their way to the Condor, Iken told Locke he was willing to die, and Locke said he was planning to survive, although unwilling to sacrifice any members of his team. Shortly after, Horrigan urged Locke to join him to escape in the smuggler's ship together. Locke stuck to his word, saying he would let Luck choose who would survive. Whilst traversing alongside the edge of a cliff, Ramos let Estrin fall to his death after refusing to try and escape with him. When they were past the cliff edge, the group took another oxygen break, and a standoff ensued as Horrigan held Aiken at gunpoint, demanding his remaining oxygen tank. Locke pulled his magnum on Horrigan, ordering him to stand down. However, Ramos decided to side with Horrigan, and the two forced Locke to surrender. As Horrigan and Ramos left the ship with Aris and the remaining weapons and oxygen pack, Aiken discovered a Condor crash nearby. Aiken and Locke recovered the Havoc nuke and learned that the Condor had limited flight capability. Aiken volunteered to detonate the warhead while Locke and Mesa used the Condor to reach the smuggler's ship. Aris, Ramos and Horrigan were consumed by Let Golo whilst running to the ship, and Mesa and Locke barely evaded the same fate. Unknown to the pair, Aiken's activation of the nuke draw Let Golo to his position and away from Locke and Mesa, allowing them to escape Alpha Shard before the nuke's detonation. After the mission to Alpha Shard, Locke underwent Spartan 4 augmentation and was assigned to lead Fire Team Osiris, consisting of Locke, Edward Buck, Olympia Vale, and Holly Tanaka. After the Didact's attack on Earth, John 117 went AWOL and Locke was ordered to track him down after several colony worlds were unexpectedly attacked. 0631 this morning. Master Chief was declared absent without leave. Locke then met with Thel Vadam and studied video recordings of Chief's history to better understand the legend. Locke has also ordered an AI to identify weaknesses in Spartan 2s and their Majorneer Mark VI armour. During his meeting with Thel, Locke led Fireteam Osiris in a joint mission with the Swords of Sanghelios against Covenant Remnant forces in the Battle of Sinion. During this mission, Locke and Osiris encountered the Warden Eternal, who would not allow them access to the Domain, even though Chief had already passed through. Take him out! The Master Chief is called, but you, your passage is denied. Thanks for watching guys, don't forget to like if you enjoyed, and subscribe if you're new. See you in the next video. Peace!